Okay, this is a prajna. This is a prajna for a Lyme disease diagnosis. Uh, basically, a person, a friend of mine and a client from the past happened to just run into them at the health food store back last spring, um, around in April. And they had mentioned this to me before in passing, and they were really serious about it at this point that they thought they, they were pretty sure they had Lyme disease and they didn't know if that was the case from their doctor. Their doctors were, I guess, uh, I guess did some degree of testing and then said no, and then just kind of wrote her off and said, no, you're not, you don't have Lyme disease, you're crazy or something. And she kept researching it more and feeling like, no, she really does think she have it. And uh, my own experience in the West has been that doctors are, wrong so much more than they are right actually in my own experience with my own body they've messed me up more than they've helped me um, aside from the time that I broke my wrist and just had to get a cast and get that fixed so I guess I'm biased but a little weary of doctors and I, I, doctors have a role to play for sure allopathic doctors but in the west we all know that the pharmaceutical health industry is the biggest industry on the planet and money just breeds corruption. So it is the most corrupt industry on the planet. And I think most people watching this would agree. doesn't mean if you're a doctor that you're corrupt, I'm not saying that at all. I do a lot of readings for doctors and of all kinds of all types. Um, with that said though, she was having one of those typical experiences you hear about or those nightmarish experiences where, the doctor just was refusing to even cons listen to her really. It was just saying like, no, you don't have it. And I've, you know, you would have this or that situation and you don't have that. So you must not have Lyme disease. Um, so I casted a prajna for right when I heard this and Virgo was the ascendant. Pull up my notes here. Virgo was the ascendant the sign of illness, the sign of uh, health, well, not necessarily chronic diseases like Lyme disease, but it's a sign of health issues and solving problems and using our intelligence to solve the problem. And it definitely is the sign of, perhaps the main sign of disease overall. It has Rahu on the ascendant. In, in Tashika Prajna, you actually don't normally use Rahu or Ketu. Uh, so, if we left that alone, we would still see this, but it being there, um, it is a plan of surprises and, you know, troublesome issues we have to deal with that we don't want to, that are hard to avoid. And that being in Virgo indicates that there's a tough health issue, a tough situation that will need to be dealt with, if you ask me. Or it points to unforeseen health issues needing to be taken more seriously. The Ascendant Lord Mercury is in the ninth house, which is great. Uh, that's a lucky, fortunate house, but it is with the eighth lord of chronic disease, Mars, which is not great, but it is not with an orb of that Mars. So that's one good thing. The eighth cusp is actually 28 degrees of Aries, though. The eighth cusp being 28 degrees of Aries, even though we see Mercury in the ninth house, this, you know, the ninth box here, we have to realize that the eighth cusp is basically like right at the edge of that box at 28 degrees of Aries here. Um, I can actually, oh yeah, this is what I wanted to do a second ago. Um, we can see here, with if you have Kala, the eighth cusp using the Campanus house cusps is at 28 degrees of Aries. So that means that the Mercury is only five degrees away from that, that dangerous eighth cusp. So Mercury is completely in the orb or the deep to the orb of aspect of the eighth house, the house of chronic disease. So that's why this isn't the eighth house is important. That's the house of chronic diseases, diseases that you'll you'll probably deal with, you know, throughout your life or that not just an acute health issue that will come up, you, okay, you need to eat differently. You're eating differently. You're fine. Now it goes away or, Oh, you get a headache that comes up every now and then. You know what I mean? That's a sixth house issue. 
but an eighth house issue is like, you know, something chronic or long lasting. Speaking of which, the word chronic comes from Saturn, Kronos, the Lord of time, the most long lasting, you know what I mean? So that's how you can kind of remember that if you need to. Um, okay, so. That, that there just basically told me, oh boy, geez. Well, it's like right at the eighth cusp. It's in the same sign as the eighth Lord. That really takes away all the luckiness of the ninth house. That means this is really a tricky situation and it doesn't look good. Look further. Here we have what is further revealing is that Mercury was stalling out and about to go retrograde. And it was about to retrograde back into the eighth house and it would cross over the sun, which is also a natural karaka of health and the health, the state of our body and our immune system and everything, and our overall vitality. So Mercury uh, was in the process of stalling out, and he went retrograde over the next week or two back into the eighth house and would cross over that dreaded eighth cusp and the sun, which is the karaka of the health. So oh gosh, that looks really bad. I thought, okay, yeah, that's looking like you do have Lyme disease. Um, yeah, so it made it seem pretty obvious to me that she did have it and the doctors were not helping her in this way. She said she was thinking about getting tests done for herself independently to see if she does indeed have Lyme disease because based on her independent research, she was thinking she did, even though they, all the authorities had said she didn't. And I saw, you know, Rahu in Virgo, that's kind of pointing to need to do research, perhaps. Um, Mercury being a plan of research, eighth house being a plan of research, Mercury with the eighth lord, um, an exalted sun in the eighth. I sort of got the impression that, wow, with that exalted sun in the eighth, it's likely that your intelligence in the eighth is research, so your intelligence is. Uh, you're right, like, or I, you know, I, I guess I kind of intuitively just sort of got that impression. I wouldn't say that's exactly something you would say every time, but you know, the sun represents our intelligence, and uh, Mercury is with the Lord of that sun, and it it just seemed like, yeah, you know, this is these are placements showing that yeah, you are doing good research here, and if you look at from the seventh house, which you might, oh, sorry. The seventh house would be the other parties, perhaps, the doctor. Their eighth house has a debilitated Jupiter. It's really in bad shape, showing they don't really know the research or know. Mm, that's, there's nothing impressive about that. That's showing bad karma. Um, but this exalted sun in the eighth house for her shows good karma with respect to her research. She's been doing good research. She's been really serious about this. So that's why I thought... Um, I looked at that exalted sun the eighth in the house of research thought, yeah, your research is probably correct in this area, actually. Now, this is the part that's really fun. Um, let me share. Um, figure out how to do this. Uh, yeah, this is just a PDF of uh, on Prajna, which is taken from Tajika Nilakantha. Um, you can see right here, it says, in respect to diseases, uh, the Lagna is the querist, the seventh, the disease, the tenth, the healer, and the fourth, the remedy. Okay, so keeping that in mind, Querent, we already kind of covered her. Yeah, she's curious, she's needed your research, that's her, Virgo. Tenth house would be the healer, the doctor. Um, there's no planet there. There's nothing going on there. And the Lord of that is in the 12th from it, which isn't really great. <sighs> kind of didn't really look like there was much um, that the uh, doctors or authorities would offer from that. The, oh yeah, and then the Lord of that house, that 10th house, is about to retrograde back into the 8th, so not supportive. 12th, 8th house, things are the least supportive, you know, so we saw that connected to the 10th house. Yeah, the doctor's not, we can't rely on that doctor to change his mind and want to do any tests. He's pretty fixed. He doesn't, he doesn't seem any more interested in that. This is the really fun one. The 7th house shows the nature of the disease. 
in a health prajna and you know like what's caused it so it's got we've got k2 there k2 rules bacteria that's just what they say you know i didn't make that rule up but that's what people say and lyme disease is caused by bacteria k2 rules bacteria it's a bacteria that you get from ticks and so there you go we see k2 in the seventh also it's in the sign of pisces and it holds venus uh, you know, you have Venus and K2 there, both spiritual planets. Venus is a Brahmin planet, especially when it's exalted in Pisces. There's a lot to do with self-knowledge and spirituality. And this will make sense to you if you know that she contracted, she's very sure, certain that she contracted Lyme disease um, when she was in India doing a, like a yoga teacher training um, and it's in a spiritual retreat ashram environment, which is Pisces. So she was in an ashram environment or a temple or a, some sort of retreat center like that. I wasn't there, you know, but that was where she was when she picked up the Lyme disease. And again, this is why I love to use the Rossies as environments. And you can watch my video series on that. But that Pisces is uh, revealing the environment of where she got this disease. Um, and then finally, the fourth house is the remedy. Oh, oh, and one more thing is that Venus ruling Jupiter. I feel like there's something here. I don't know a lot about Lyme disease. If I knew more about Lyme disease, I would definitely guess Venus was the culprit. Uh, you know, Venus deals with the digestive system, the kidneys, deals with so many things though. So I don't, I don't know anything about Lyme disease really other than what I just said about you get it from ticks and that's a chronic thing. Um, if anyone knows more about it, maybe they could share and we could make some more connections and try to figure out what exactly Venus was doing. Cause it was right at the seventh cusp. Like we're at 28 degrees of Virgo. It's at 29. So it, it's, it just had to be doing something important. Um, but I, I don't know what that is. I just want to make a note though, that someone, some of you may know who's watching. Fourth house is the remedy um, that's shown by the fourth house, the medicine or the situation. Sadder here means that a Saturnian remedy is required. My first thought was some sort of cleansing, some sort of fasts that could be undergone with the help of a trained professional healer or a naturopath of some sort, or perhaps even like uh, getting panchakarma done by a qualified Ayurvedic doctor. Some sort of really in-depth cleansing therapy done would help. Um, fasts, uh, oh yeah, I already said that, but then, um, she didn't, yeah, she didn't ask me for a reading or anything about this, so I didn't go into solving it, um, and at the time, she wasn't even sure if she had it, Lyme disease officially, um, but I also feel like this Saturn is also just pointing to a deeper psychological reason for the disease, um, that, maybe therapies, you know, um, homeopathic stuff, just all kinds of therapies would probably be helpful for on some degree, on some level. Um, one other thing though, too, is that she is a Capricorn and has Saturn in the 12th ruling planet. And she uh, had those placements for falls from heights and things. Uh, and they were kind of scheduled to come out this year because the ruler of Sag, Jupiter, is in the sixth for her chart, sixth house of disease. And so it does seem like she was sort of meant to, to have this disease from that angle, um, at least maybe to learn and to grow through or for some part of her karma to be burned off. Um, it's a tough situation, but the cool thing, the good news is, is that she actually did do independent tests she found some website or some independent place other than her doctor, sent off these test results, got the results, and she did have Lyme disease. So she did diagnose that correctly. And in my opinion, that's actually really a good karmic, a, a lot of, that's giving good karmic merit for your Saturn, for you to decide for yourself to do that and get the test done and to find out that and to, and to then go about trying to deal with that in the best way you can. And, um, Hopefully she does, and I know she's very, very serious about it and has looked into it a lot. And we know that there's a lot of alternative therapies for all kinds of diseases. You probably know that if you're watching this video because you probably are open to alternative therapies. So anyways, uh, it's pretty much, yeah, that's, that's pretty much everything I had to say about that.
Um, if you want to look at this box right here, this is the chart of uh, about 20 days later after this progeny was done, and you can see that Mercury is indeed retrograding and has passed over that 28 degrees of the eighth cusp. And so Mercury there in Taurus in the ninth, retrograded back into the eighth, in the house of disease. It's really the main thing that we should note for this prajna. Okay, cool. So any other questions about this? Or if you have any questions, let me know. Um, and uh, if you have any information on Lyme disease, please share some feedback. It might be helpful. Thank you.